Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we're hanging out in Long Beach, California, checking out the first official electric bike from Surly. This is the Big Easy. And I've seen a bunch of Surly bikes, regular acoustic bikes, converted to electric over the years using like bionic system or a fang or whatever but you know there's this kind of the screwing around and stuff and those bikes while very adaptable and one of the things i always love about surly is all these mounting points and stuff this is probably like the cleanest setup i've ever seen because it is running with bosch and you can see some of those cables are internally routed not all of them and to me surly has always been kind of like a just something that you could customize you could set it up for bike packing touring uh, maybe commuting, you could add some fenders and racks. They've got just a ton of accessories uh, for, for like sleeping bags and things and then different sizes of front racks. In this case, it's got kind of a long tail cargo design with an aluminum alloy platform back here. It's kind of tapered with 12 of these boxes. So maybe you could use straps and then 29 little holes, not threaded, but you can mount all kinds of accessories, including like uh, a yep seat interface so you can't do it directly to this but there's an interface that would work very cool and i love that it comes with these bags and everything so i'm going to try to hit some of the specs real quick before we get too much into the accessories this does come in three frame sizes but only one color this nice tan color the deck matches and then we've actually got a recent meal or neva over here that it's the same color so we thought that would be kind of cool matching these bikes up a little bit it's been very comfortable for me because they're running these surly branded extraterrestrial tires 26 by 2.5 so a little bit higher volume adding some stability some comfort nice knobs here these are it's smooth like we've been riding on concrete a lot but there's good traction here for a little bit of off-road again getting into that like bike packing scenario that i mentioned a minute ago all steel frame steel fork that has some vibration dampening qualities as well a lot of strength built into this thing and just coming back down here look at this we got a bottle cage boss right here below that down tube another one below this i don't know what you would call this these are kind of like seat stays sort of chain stay situation extra long chain because it has to go way back to that uh, 11 sprocket cassette sram gx derailleur I was hoping to see like some sort of a slap guard or something right there just because this chain, you know, it could bounce up or down a little bit. It's a decent derailleur, but you, know, you can see I'm already getting a little bit greasy just touching it there. I, I would consider putting on like a piece of clear tape or something just because I do like to ride on and off road and you get a little bit of bouncing going on. But by default, the only thing that it comes with, it doesn't come with like the fenders or anything besides this like really sturdy rear rack. Those bags flop around a little bit, otherwise fairly quiet. 18 tooth chain ring with a nice guide. So many times with the Bosch performance line motors, they have that smaller sprocket. I believe this is 18 tooth right here. It's got the Miranda guard that keeps your pant legs and stuff from kind of rubbing up against the chain quite so much. And maybe it keeps it from derailing outward. But this one has another, uh, you know, a guide plate, aluminum alloy from keeping it from bouncing inward. Cause you can see that it's set out a little bit from the side of the motor casing. So the bottom brackets, maybe a little bit uh, wider spacing there so that it can go all the way back. I, I haven't studied super close on all those geometry elements. The website's decent, but I have gone through and added as much detail as I could uh, back at the full review. We're using a standard 135 millimeter hub spacing in the rear with a nine millimeter axle quick release skewer. So quick release on the rear, quick release up front for doing some trail maintenance. I love the rims that they've got. These are 32 hole, 14 gauge spokes, black with black nipples, and then these nice little reinforcement eyelets. So that adds a lot of strength, and this is WTB, so it's not generic stuff. You pay a little bit more for some of these name brand bikes with a name brand drive system right here. This is about $5,000, um, and Bosch Systems have a two-year comprehensive warranty. They've done a really good job. Actually, just earlier today, my friend Jeremy, who has this like fat bike, uh, it was one of the, I think it was the felt bike, yeah, he, he got that and did some bike packing with it and the motor was having some trouble. It was loose and Bosch just warrantied the motor. They're gonna get him a brand new one. And this was after like a year and a half or something. So really lucked out there. That builds a lot of trust. They, they had no idea that I was, it's just separate from me. So I'm calling, I'm calling a friend out here trying to be 
um, as authentic as possible, but my experience with them has been, has been pretty great. And this is the Performance Line CX motor, so it's high torque, and you think about moving additional weight, I think this is rated for like 200 pounds back here, up to 400 pounds passenger and cargo uh, all together, maybe 300 pounds just the passenger, kind of looking at the website, and I recorded those details as well. So when you think about that much weight, even though this rides fairly comfortably, just the length of it and the potential for hauling stuff, it's nice that you get up to 75 Newton meters of peak torque with this motor. So it's kind of like 250 to 600 watt output. And that reduction gearing system with the 18 tooth chain ring, it spins two and a half revolutions for every crank revolution. So my understanding and my experience has been that it starts very quickly and it gives you kind of a mechanical advantage. But again, it's a little bit, a little bit closer here. So versus a traditional size sprocket, which would be two and a half times larger. And that keeps that chain a little bit closer sometimes. And that's why I was talking about that initially, just how the chain could bump up against things. These are 175 millimeter crank arms, which is interesting. That's a step up. And this is the size medium frame. So remember they have small, medium, and large, 16, 17, and 20. So it's a big step up on the large. It does not come with pedals. So those are aftermarket that were just slapped on for this review. It doesn't come with these awesome uh, cup holders, but Salsa, is Salsa also owned by Surly or part of QB? Yeah, yeah, so they're also uh, brands owned by QBP. Okay, and QBP, Quality Bicycle Parts, um, it's a company that has just a ton of accessories and they work with a lot of dealers. It's neat to see them getting into electric bikes uh, with this model here. So we've got the Tektro Orion 4P, and the 4P stands for quad piston or four piston calipers, so a little bit more surface area extra grabbing power, which is nice on a bike that's this big. 180 millimeter rotors, front and rear. And then this kickstand's been working fairly well, but I was surprised because a lot of times on the long tail cargos, especially, I'll see like a double leg kickstand that kind of like splays out like that, stabilizes the whole thing. Sometimes there's like a deflopulator spring that tries to keep the, the front wheel straight. I didn't see that here. Um, but what I did see is a second mounting interface right here. So you could have two power packs, now, whether that's a power pack 500 or the older 400, that's a neat option. Maybe you already have an electric bike. Uh, you could just swap that battery out and then go long range with this thing, right? The trekking scenario that I keep talking about. I think that's so cool. By default, it's got a power pack 500, 36 volt, 13.4 amp hours with a nice little LED readout on the side and then the charging interface. And I believe if you charge in here, and you have a second battery, it'll charge them both simultaneously. And then the interface up here that we're gonna get to in just a second, but I'm hanging out with Chris Nolte from Propel Bikes here. And you've got some, I don't know, some background, a little bit of history that we could talk about. Cause I've seen other Surly products. I've seen the Moonlander with the Bionics kit and stuff, yeah, but yeah. tell me a little bit about where we're coming from. Yeah, Surly's been around for a while. I mean, they started in 98 um, and uh, they've been, they really started with steel frames and just doing rugged bikes and just bikes that you could just throw anything at them and they'll hold up. They were really big, uh, you know, one of the, early brands in the fat bike movement and, and yeah. <laughs> you know so many credit them to starting that what uh, was the other one they had that so they had the pugsley the is pugsley, that it yeah so the pugsley was like a 3.8 inch wide uh tire the moonlander even wider 4.8 inch wide That's tire awesome. so and this can handle the, up to three inches three inches on the front uh 2.5 on the rear if you look you you know there's a couple of different reasons you know you have the, basically one of the main things is the chain line and uh in order to do that it's it's kind of challenging to have a, a normal q factor as in the width of your crank arms and have that and that's what i was trying to figure out because it almost looked like there's this spacer down here and i was thinking maybe the q factor is a little bigger it's it's already a little bit bigger on bosch than like the shimano mid drive and stuff yeah yeah, so it is a little bit wider to accommodate those 2.5 inch wide tires, um, and it and it, they can run fenders in the front and rear with the 2.5. Uh, but if you do three in the front, maybe there's not as much room for fenders. Yeah, it's good to know. And these yeah. tires, while they don't have like reflective sidewalls, they do have some sort of puncture resistant sidewalls. It's like cap proof and slash proof is what they yeah. said. Yeah, yeah, they're. Uh, yeah, the sidewalls are built up. They're tubeless ready. Yeah. Rims are tubeless ready. So it's nice that you can set the bike up tubeless uh, pretty pretty easily. Definitely a nice feature. Yeah, and well, okay. So there's so much to say about bikes like this. I want to point out that it does come with a faster four amp 
uh, Bosch charger, 1.7 pounds, very compact, easy to toss into those bags. I love that it comes with the bags by default. And then one of the things we were looking at earlier when we were getting all the specs and stuff is there's this little nub thing right here. And I think that's to protect maybe the derailleur if the bike tips to the side or something. What, what were you saying about that, Chris? Uh, yeah, they, this is an adapter that um, I, I believe it is actually to protect the bike and it's also to, to keep the, the frame, uh, these these parts from getting crushed or something like that because it is, you know, just a open tube. But the nice thing about this setup is that you can use, there's a an adapter that goes on the side if oh you want to run a trailer. They make, Surly actually makes a trailer, there's the bill trailer and the ted trailer the ted is the shorter of the two um and then the bill bill is a super long trailer it's huge yeah made in a similar sort of way you know just really heavy duty steel quality parts um and then it, it has a, a really nice yoke to it so basically it's the way that the trailer mounts to the bike so you can tilt and hmm. and it it's it's really well made so one of the best quality trailers out there in our experience so Neat. it's nice to have that added capacity you have a bike that can hold a ton and then a, you can add on a trailer and hold even more it's like a van yeah sweet at that point for sure and one of the accessories that they they showcase on the website it's like this kid combo pack um it's got like pads it's got this surround bar setup and then a handlebar, very much like some of the other cargo electric bikes we've seen. And they yeah. sell those parts independently or as a package for like 325 if you want it all. Right, yeah, the kid corral they call yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Right, yeah. Golden so, corral, I'm getting hungry yeah. for a buffet. Maybe they shut those down. I don't know if they're still around. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Reminds I me of being a kid. I didn't have a good experience. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, me neither. <laughs> so maybe we, maybe that's why. Um, I want to point out that, you know, comfort's a big deal for me. So we talked about the steel, the higher volume tires, but 30.9 millimeters on that seat post. So you could swap it out and get like a suspension post if you wanted to. Yeah. You know, body float um, or connect, I think they call it connect, now, thud no, buster yeah, and sure. SR Sun Tour. Sweat back bar. This is like 740 millimeters. So it's kind of a, a longer bar and it's a little bit more forward. I've seen other ones that come up and back a little bit, but... I, I always think of Surly as it's kind of like this nomad, like almost like a little bit of hipster mixed in there. There's like kind of a style thing about it and it's fun. Like you can do so much with these bikes and those handlebars to me, they say like sportier versus like mommier. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, for sure. No Definitely. offense, like moms are great and everything like that. But it, yeah. this isn't orange, it's not bright orange. It's kind of got that like khaki, cool look to it but a bike like this so you want to be able to take it on the trails and stuff like that having the wider bar with more leverage definitely yeah. the trend now and and you could really whip it around a little bit more with them so it's you nice. could you could and with 26 inch tires front and rear so a lot of times like the cargo bikes will have like 26 up front and then 20 in the rear and it'll sort of drop things down including the derailleur so that's part of where you get those 175 length uh, crank arms and maybe just a little bit more comfort and it's easier to pack one tube one tire as a spare instead of two different sizes yeah that's a good point you know and it has a the proper mountain bike derailleur on there with the um SRAM 11 speed so that's a great setup 11 to 42 yeah we didn't say that on the teeth so yeah, like a, 18 up front a, and it's a sunrace cassette you know which is interesting to see some of the brands kind of doing stuff like that we've seen that before with mustache where yeah you know using the sun race because they're heavier duty they're really they're great for e-bikes so why not do it it's good stuff especially the high torque system so you know these drive units they've got that custom interface here so it'll work with the bosch uh, bottom bracket design and everything there's kind of proprietary we've got the plastic cover on this one i've seen others where it's tipped up and a little bit more integrated but it's going to make it a little bit easier to service if necessary i found that the plastic it's it's a good like protection mechanism too if you do encounter like a log or rock strike down there. Chris, uh, you know, we've covered this pretty well. Is there anything else that maybe we're missing before I jump into? Yeah, um, I think the big thing is just talking about the accessories and the intention and like what the idea and the concept behind the bike because I think that a lot of people will look at the Big Easy and say, well, you know, if I compare that to some of the other cargo bikes which seem to be so heavily designed around carrying kids which is a huge market and a really big thing in our experience this is kind of meeting some other needs you yeah. know so 
they, it can't accommodate two yep seats uh, where some of the other can but this can put two full-size children in some ways maybe they're a little bit more comfortable a little bit higher up mm -hmm. but you know you have the balance thing so the higher the weight the maybe more challenging could be to balance um, and then stuff like the kickstand so it comes with a single kickstand which you talked about before yeah but really if you're taking it more off-roading and a little bit rougher terrain maybe some of those kickstands are not yeah. as ideal they hang down more they stick out to the sides more yeah and we actually spoke to surly and just asking like hey are these like parts compatible across different brands you know for example like if you look at the tubes it looks very similar to the extra cycle system which actually the original big dummy was based on the free radical is one of the first complete oh. bikes to be built with the free radical system and the free radical for those who don't know it was like this part that you connected to an existing bicycle to make it a long tail cargo bike that's right and now now extra cycle has kind of reintroduced that product as what's now called the leap oh. so it's it's just kind of a little bit heavier duty version of that Hmm. Um, so the, the getting back to that question of, you know, look similar to extra cycle. Can I just use extra cycle parts on there as per Surly? No, um, maybe it's possible to use some things, but, but their official stance is they're, they're not really compatible yeah. partly because they, they made this a little bit wider to fit those wider tires. Uh -huh. So as you see the, the rack actually is uh tapered here hmm. so whereas the extra cycle it's more of a straight setup and then as far as the kickstand this is probably a really common thing for people want to carry a couple of kids on the back um one there's one upgrade that you do is more of an aftermarket thing it's something called the rolling jackass technically it might be able to fit but there there are some differences with the tubing on here yeah and then the extra cycle setup also it looks similar but again it's not made for this setup so okay. just something to consider well, thanks for the clarifications um you know it's good stuff i the other thing i i was thinking about like what it was like riding this over here i love that they've got like six spacers and then this really interesting headset so it's like the visco set and viscous is like a descriptive uh, terminology to describe like a thick kind of a fluid or something like that and apparently there's like some vibration dampening and also speed wobble prevention built into that that's right yeah there's a fluid in there and basically if if the bike if you start to kind of wobble in a quick way yeah it'll actually slow it down the, it, like the viscous it's like woo, like so right, that's a little bit right of so it still handles really well and you can turn it and it's not going to prevent you from turning it but but it's actually they they had this one specifically tuned for the Big Easy, wow. which is which is really interesting product. You know, we were talking about it doesn't have the deflopulator, but yeah. actually, in, which which beyond the fact of just you know preventing the wheel from tipping over, it also stabilizes the wheel it does. a little bit. Yeah, and this this does this, and it's kind of interesting. Huh. You can actually see uh, a video on Cane Creek's website of like them riding the bike with no hands and the 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 handlebars start to wobble and then with the new headset it actually just goes straight and it's That's interesting so cool. product I wonder if we we'll, might start to see that on other bikes yeah and that you know i was mentioning a deflopulator so it's cool that they've addressed a lot of those things and then there is a little bit of sweep in the bars we've got just kind of flat grips so again a little bit sportier maybe you've got your mountain biking gloves on these aren't ergonomic or something the two finger maybe three finger depends on how big they are but uh really easy to pull those those brake levers and do a little bit of reach adjust on the fly depending on the weather and how far you want to reach if you've got gloves on so you know lots lots to say i think the highlights for me is just the second battery option and then having them build something that's purpose-built e-bike to me it's cool that they include like the hardware and the wiring and stuff just to do that extra battery because a lot of other companies you have to choose at the time of purchase you have to opt in and you have to pay a lot more money so five thousand bucks is already kind of a lot but you know for for an electric cargo bike with a high-end drive system so anyway we'll pull this up so quite quite a lot of options inside these bags so you have kind of this the large compartment you have this smaller compartment which has this kind of optional oh, divider. divider which you can <laughs> attach here That's and cool. then you have a huge sling so you could put all sorts of stuff whether you want to put a watermelon a keg <laughs> or what not in yeah here. for real you could have like a hook oh my gosh so that i mean that's really the sort of stuff if you look at some of their marketing videos and that sort of thing it's just about just hauling stuff and just doing whatever you need and uh, yeah 
it's, <laughs> it's definitely cool. We were talking to Nate Smith, who's a gentleman from Surly, and he's been in the industry for quite a while. And he was like, yeah, this bike was pretty easy to set up uh, in terms of building, so for a dealer. And I think they're they're like a dealer company, right? Like, they're, they're not yeah, they work, direct. Yeah, they work explicitly through dealers, yeah. Okay, sweet, yeah. sweet. I feel like that's it. Will you toss the charger in my backpack real yeah, quick? And I'll, sure. I'm gonna jump into the display system here. So this is the Bosch Curion. It's their smaller display. Kind of stays out of the way and keeps this cockpit area clean if you want to mount like maybe your phone or something to the stem cap and do some strava or gps a little power button up top you press it and it comes to life pretty quickly it's a gray scale a little bit of a smaller display and it has the buttons built in so it's it's a more affordable option there is a walk mode in order to use that you got to be in one of the four assist levels and then you press walk and then you hold the plus button and the reason i'm calling that out right now is because you know, especially with a cargo bike, if this was loaded up with a lot of gear and maybe you're just you're just trying to like navigate through a crowded park or something, it's maybe it's not appropriate to ride wherever you're at. Um, the walk mode could come in handy, but this is a class one electric bike, meaning you can take it on more trails. It's like the most accessible option for, for electric bikes, especially in California where I'm filming right now. Um, so coming back to the display, we've got speed, it's in miles per hour, but you can switch that by holding minus and tapping power for a second. So we're in kilometers now and back. And then we've got a little battery infographic. It's got five ticks, so each one is a 20% step. Um, not, not quite as precise or uh, just, it, th there's limited information on this one, especially compared to the Intuvia or the new Kiox color display, but it still works pretty well. And then, you know, there's tactile clicks and stuff. One thing I've noticed that as you're pressing a plus or minus button, if you press at the bottom, it doesn't really click in as easily. You can try to get the middle or the top edge because it kind of pivots down, if that makes sense. So those are the two major things. And then in the middle, this section changes if you hold the minus button. So right now it says range. So depending on the level of assist I'm in, like turbo, it says, okay, based on the last mile of riding, we estimate you can get like 23 more miles. And that's with almost a full battery. So keep in mind the weight of the bike, the tires and everything, and how hard I was working. If we arrow down to eco, it estimates 76. So there's a there's a lot of variation depending on the assist level. And the idea is to get home safe, like without running out of juice. And again, that second battery pack is a really nice option. This bike weighs about 68.5 pounds. So it's definitely on the heavier side uh, because it's a cargo bike. But compared to other cargo bikes, I, I think it's actually, you know, it's, it's not that bad. Um, and that's with the bags and everything. It's weighed as is with the pedals and everything earlier today. So I'm gonna hold the minus button again. And we go from range to assist level. So it's just all the time shows assist. And it's worth noting that anytime you change assist, it kind of overrides the other menus and shows you what level you're in. So I hold minus again. Uh, trip distance, 63 miles. Total distance, 99. So I think that's kind of it. And if you held the plus button, it does activate lights if they were wired in, but they're not. So that's something that some shops can add for you if you want to take advantage of your battery and then have lights that are kind of what? What's going on? Oh, the other thing, Mitch, I, I don't know if you mentioned before, but the dropper post also. Oh, thank you, Chris. Chris has given me a hint over there. So we're talking about like what shops can do and because you have to get this at a shop. I, I think about the safety and the lights and stuff. And he was like, you know, another one of the things on kind of their marketing kit is this is pre set up for uh, adding adding like a, a dropper post. And so maybe you've got this bike and you went with the large or something because someone in your family is extra tall, but someone who's a little bit shorter wants to ride it. You can add the dropper post just to make this almost like a mountain bike. So some of it has to do with the type of riding you're doing, the terrain, you can drop it down to go over some like whoops and, and drop descents, yeah. or you can make it lower if you're someone who has a family and you know this doesn't have a quick release um, uh, clamp, right? So the dropper post is a nice, like convenient way to set it up for different people's heights. Or riding in urban environments is really nice. You come stop at a light, drop your seat down, and put That's your feet down point. on the ground, <laughs> yeah. and you get get back going again. And um, they're nice actually, anywhere, right? I mean, yeah, that's the truth. But I'm actually anticipating. I'm putting one on my cargo bike and putting a dropper post for that exact reason, like more specifically, just to be able to, when I stop at the light, drop my post down, put my feet down, yeah. just be comfortable, and you know. Oh. It's it's a nice feature. And plenty of room up here for adding that little dropper lever. Um, the triggers here, these are SRAM NX, and you've got like a one direction on the high and then three steps on the low. So it is possible to shift gears here uh, pretty rapidly and a little bit more advanced. I think that's it. Have we covered everything, Chris? I think so, yeah. Uh, we've done our best. 
cool. As always, you guys chime in if you have any questions in the comments or back at the forums. I'll put a link at the end of the video. I'm gonna hop on this thing and ride around. I like to ride around at the highest level turbo, but I wanna point out that this also has EMTB, which is a really good option. It's more dynamic. I almost think of it as like a kind of a torque sensing uh, assist because it gives you a range of feedback. It's not just going all the way hard, which is turbo, um, but it's also not super limited like Eco where it's not gonna go. It's, it's just a really good option for actual mountain biking. That's why it's called EMTB mode. So they've got it set up with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it up to turbo just to, I wanna get that pronounced sound do a little step over action. There we go. And here we go. Very nice. Awesome to be able to stop with just one hand, uh, especially on a cargo bike that's a little bit longer, a little bit heavier. And then did you see how quickly that chain ring started and stopped when I was pedaling? You know, I started off, I wasn't shifting gears, so I'm holding the camera here. It's a pretty good setup, it's clean, it's fast. It's it's like a little bit more aggressive, kind of like a mountain bike, and I like that style. It's one of the things they talk about, again, on the website, and we're talking to the rep and stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, you know, it feels like I'm riding a regular bike. Not exactly, I mean, you can tell that it has a tail, and there's a little, I was shaking this thing, trying to get like frame flex going on. It really wasn't too bad, because it only comes in diamond like this, but there's a little bit of weight there getting thrown around with those those bags. And this one's empty right now, right? So this is like best case scenario. Okay guys, from here you got that 18 tooth chain ring with the nice guide. I love it that they got the metal like sandwich there so you don't drop the chain, especially because this is kind of like a mountain long tail cargo bike. Uh, the chain here, you can't see way back there, but 11 to 42 to teeth uh, on the Sunrace cassette and the SRAM derailleur. It's a cool setup. I haven't really been noticing too much chain like contact there, but I'm gonna get it to the higher gear and just maybe ride it off the curb here just to get some sense of like how loose it is or if you're gonna get any chain slap. So I'm in the highest level of assist. Keep an eye on that motor and an ear for how, how loud it is. At the higher RPMs, up to 120, it can get a little bit louder. There's a whole reduction gear thing going on there. So the chain ring spins two and a half times for every crank revolution. And that means if you're pedaling without power, there's a little bit of drag. It's not something that's been a real issue for me, but it, I wanna be fair. That's one of the kind of considerations for Bosch compared to Shimano or Broza or Yamaha motors. They have like a one-to-one -one chain ring. So anyway, I'm gonna start in like a low gear and then shift all the way up and go off the curb. Here we go. Oh boy, looks like the camera got bumped out of position there. So we got high RPM, a little bit of noise there, shifting through all the gears. It was popping a little bit. It's it's a more aggressive shifting setup, but uh, there is shift detection is another thing that Bosch has. So it, it kind of listens for the wave of uh, pedal pressure and then also any spikes in pressure and that's from shifting and then it, it reduces pressure. It's not perfect, it's software driven, but um, it's nice. It's something that not a lot of other systems have and that's gonna protect your chain and uh, your sprockets long-term, so very cool. Okay guys, I'm on the Nevo here. I'm gonna be filming Chris. Just wanted to give you an idea of what this looks like third person. Uh, whenever it's clear, buddy. Looking pretty good. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's like a pickup truck with the empty in the back. It's working pretty well. Awesome. There we go. Not bad. Feeling pretty comfortable once you get up to speed, even with no hands. Coming back to that 26 inch wheel size. That's pretty it's like kind of industry standard for a long time. It's not 27.5. It's not gonna be as expensive to get different tubes and to replace those. And it's a good strong size. 
right? So you kind of get that balance, especially with the higher volume tires of that lowered attack angle, but you don't have a frame that's super high off the ground. Um, I think that's about it. Chris, I really appreciate your help coming out with me today and yeah, giving us the history of Surly stuff. Uh, chime in if you have any questions, you guys. Have fun out there. Love you. Ride safe.